Let's flip it over to the Eagles because they were coming off of an upset win over the Panthers that caused people to maybe think of them a little bit differently or maybe, as the case may be, think differently of the Carolina Panthers. But the Eagles showed some fight. The Eagles hung around, and they did make it interesting with that late touchdown. I, I think they still have a long way to go to be where they want to be, and who knows whether this current collection of coaches and players will get them there. But they don't have anything to be ashamed of. I Look, they didn't have anything to be ashamed of against the Chiefs. And I at a certain point, your fans don't want to be able to say, well, okay, well, we don't suck. We're not the Jaguars. At a certain point, you just want to win football games. Look, last night told me two things about the Eagles. Tough team, really competitive team, feisty. Um, I love the element that Jalen Hurts' legs can bring to a game. And I love the fact that Jalen Hurts just is not afraid of anything. I mean, he came back, he fought last night and all that. But Mike, you know what? I think at the end of the day, when the Eagles... Uh, are going to examine whether Jalen Hurts is going to be their long-term quarterback. He's got time to fix it. But I'll tell you one thing. He's just not accurate enough. He hasn't shown that he's accurate enough in the first month plus of this season. He missed three or four throws last night that could have extended drives that just were really hurtful to their cause. So, I, I, I mean, I'm impressed with what I've seen out of him, but he's also got limitations as well. They really were suffocated offensively. It's amazing the game was only six points. It took them a long time to cross 100 total yards. Hertz had 115 yep. passing yards, 12 for 26, which is just not the kind of accuracy that we are used to from NFL quarterbacks. And the running game, actually, to have 100 yards on the ground total against the Buccaneers... That's pretty impressive, and that sparked a question for Coach Nick Sirianni after the game about why they didn't run it more. Let's hear from Sirianni on that point. Again, it always starts with if us putting the guys in position to make plays. Um, and so it starts with us as coaches first to put them in the right position, go to the right player uh, with the football um, to try to get our guys going. Um, so it always starts with that. But then, and then you, you always look at the execution too, right? It's just it's the execution, and it's and it's us putting them in the right position. So there was there was definitely some missed opportunities there in the past game, uh, but it felt like there wasn't enough missed opportunity. There's more that, hey, we just got to get a, do a better job of getting these guys in position to make plays against right. the defenses. At what point do you have to kind of reassess, um, you know, what you're doing philosophically on offense to make sure that your running backs are getting the ball? Yeah, um, always. I mean, we're always thinking, we're always thinking about that. Uh, the, the two, the, the couple plays that Miles had today that were, well, were long runs, those were RPOs too. Um, but we, yeah, we just, we have to be able to, to be able to get them touches in there. And uh, I, I don't think I, I've made that, I, I've said that too before that we got to be able to make the, make sure they get, get their touches. Um, but again, we're, we're trying to call the best play that's, that's for us in that particular time. Um, we had called runs today. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't real great for us. Um, and that's why we went with a little more RPOs with it. You know, Peter, I don't want to pick on Sirianni here. I don't want to, but it's going to come off like I am. But coach has to be the ultimate communicator in an organization. Coach has to be the one who can inspire confidence and faith and belief and take advantage of the opportunity to provide explanations that the media can then take to the fans, the fans can then take to their other fans, armed with debates when they're sitting at the bar or out at the barbecue or wherever the case may be. And... When I think of how Brandon Staley communicates, and it seems like every press conference he has, there's a two-minute chunk that you would like to memorize and use in your own life whenever you could, and it's amazing how straightforward <laughs> and reasonable it is. And then I see Sirianni, and I think, man, look, I, the guy may be the best coach who's ever lived, but when it comes to that important skill of communication and persuading fans and media to understand who you are, why you do what you do, why your team does what it does. Now, Bill Belichick is closer to Sirianni than Staley, but he doesn't need to inspire confidence. When you're a first-year coach with a 
program that everybody has questions about, you need to be able to answer some of those questions in a way that people will say, oh, I get it. He's got a plan. Yes, it's going to work. Yes, let's give it time. Yes, they're on the right track. I don't get that from Sirianni. Here's what I think some coaches need to... um, Nick Sirianni was didn't want to say last night, hey, we were facing the best run defense. I don't care what the stats say. We were facing the best run defense in football last night. You think I'm going to run Miles Sanders normally 15 to 20 times in a game like that? You're crazy. I mean, and and the running we're going to do is mostly going to be with Jalen Hurts trying to get away from between the tackles. Okay? And there's no harm in saying when you're explaining why you had the game plan that you did, there's no harm in saying, listen, we, uh, we have great respect for what Tampa has done against the run. Vita Vey right now is the best run player in football, blah, 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 whatever it is you would say. So that obviously is going to have something to do with what we do. And when we saw we were going to be able to do a little bit more than that, We started to do it. We started to give the ball to Miles Sanders a little bit more. And I think the reason why Eagles fans would be upset after a game like that is that they look at their numbers and they say, man, we're gaining 5.2 yards of carry this year on the run. And we got a quarterback who is really more, you know, he's, he's too inaccurate. So why aren't we running the ball more? And I think that is something this week, this weekend, and going into the Eagles, the rest of their schedule now, their last 11 games, they have to consider who Jalen Hurts is. And then they have to consider what their running game is. And to me, right now, their running game is better than their passing game. And we've seen them twice now in prime time. This season, the last time we saw them on a Monday night against the Cowboys, Miles Sanders had two carries. Kenneth Gainwell had one, and that was it for the running backs. Jalen Hurts had nine rushes, but the running backs need to get the ball more. And I don't know what's wrong with saying we're going against one of the best run defenses in football. That factors into the game planning, but they did gain 100 yards last night on the ground. Kevin Stefanski explained very well earlier this week how – your approach changes during a game and you have to coach the game that's unfolding in front of you. And there is another team out there that is trying to do certain things. So your approach is going to be affected by what that team does well and what that team is doing. And I just look for reasons to have faith in the Eagles. And you've mentioned it a couple times now. This year was the opportunity for Jalen Hurts to prove he can be the guy. And I firmly believe that at the end of the year, there's going to be a pass-fail grade applied to Jalen Hurts and if he passes they keep him as the starter next year and if he fails they go find somebody else and I still don't completely rule out the Eagles making a late run for Deshaun Watson if they've decided by the Tuesday after week eight that Hurts isn't the guy I'm not sure that Watson wants to go there which is one with the practical impediments if the Dolphins are also in the mix for Watson where Watson does want to go but you know, Peter, Jalen Hurts kind of has this this tentative feel to his status with the Eagles because their first order of business is find out if he's a franchise quarterback, and if he's not, he's gone, and we got to move on to the next one. And, Mike, you know, the more football you watch this year, and look, I am not as down on Brian Flores and Chris Greer as – I think most Dolphins followers are. But the more you watch football and the more you look at Miami and say, hmm, Miami's one and four. Right now, if the draft were held today, Miami would have a top 10 draft pick. I don't know what order the draft would be in today, and it doesn't matter because you're not drafting on October 15th. If the season ended today, it doesn't. I always love that. If the season ended today, well, it doesn't, so who cares? It doesn't, yeah. And but but the point point I was going to make is, you know, let's let's try to be uh, fair and not have green colored glasses on. The Eagles are going to do what? Go eight and nine, seven and ten, nine and eight. I don't know. They're not going to be great this year. 
But, you know, let's just say that the Eagles have the 15th pick and the Dolphins have the seventh pick. Let's just say, all right? So if that's the case and you're looking at what's going to happen next year, you know, next April, and I have no idea what quarterbacks are good anyway. We didn't even know a year ago who Zach Wilson was, and he ended up being the second pick in the draft. But my only point is that, you know, if you have the seventh and 15th picks in the draft, and there is, look, if there's a no-doubt quarterback, probably the team with the first pick is going to take him. But if there are other quarterbacks, that gives you the ammo to move up. And, you know, Howie Roseman has been, I would say, probably the biggest wheeler dealer in the first round of the draft in recent years. So I think they'll figure a way to try to get one of the quarterbacks they really like, unless, unless Jalen Hurts plays more accurate football in the last 11 games. And you mentioned how little we know about who the top quarterbacks will be. Immediately after the 2021 draft, the sports books began to post their odds for the first overall pick in the 2022 draft. And the guy who was 2.25 to 1 to be the first overall pick back in late April, early May has been benched and is going to answer, enter the transfer portal of Oklahoma. That was Spencer Rattler. He was the clear favorite to be the first <laughs> overall pick in the draft. And now, now he's not even on the field for the Oklahoma Sooners. So that extra year and hasn't of he made, can change Hey, everything. Mike, hasn't he, hasn't he made $200,000 in NIL revenue? You know, he's sitting on the bench, and I don't know who's paying him. Some poor car dealer is paying him to, you know, 50000 bucks or whatever it is to sit on the bench and request out of Norman, Oklahoma. It's, uh, you know, football's a funny game sometimes. Back to Hertz, who capped his career at Oklahoma after transferring from Alabama. Let's hear from him a little bit about what he's trying to do with this Eagles team as he makes the most of his opportunity to prove that he's the guy. What is our identity as a football team? What is our identity as an offense? Um, I think we have everything we need here in Philadelphia. We have everything. Um, going toe-to-toe -to -toe every team we play. Um, shooting ourselves in the foot and not taking advantage of opportunities, right? It starts with me. But I have unwavering faith in every everybody we have here. And it's, 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 it's a matter of putting it all together um, and making it flow. Ideally, what would you like the identity to be? I mean, I know that it's still forming, but what do you think is the, you, have, you said you have the pieces, what do you think the identity should be of this team? I just want to win. And it's coming. Again, I don't want to pick on Nick Sirianni, but I'd rather I'd rather listen to Jalen Hurts talk about the team. It inspires me more about the Eagles. I'm sorry, Nick, if you're watching, and if you are, well, what you the hell what, are you Mike? doing? Get back to work. Hey, Mike, 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 I'll, I'll make this point to you, though. Think about what you just said, okay? Nick Sirianni has been speaking to a big room of press basically for nine months. And not for all of nine months, but the first time he'd ever done it, basically, was nine months ago. When uh, the Philly media or whatever, I don't even know if that was in person or if it was Zoom, whatever. But I mean, he has been the man for nine months, okay? Jalen Hurts has been the man at Alabama for two years, having to, uh, you know, basically put thoughts together cogently after a game the way he did last night. Then he's got to do it for one year at Oklahoma. And those places are crammed with media people who cover the team. Maybe they're not as tough as the people in Philadelphia, but the bodies are equal. And so, and so if you look at that, Jalen Hurts has got far more experience in dealing with the press, even though he's whatever, 20 two or 23 years old than Nick Sirianni does. He's never had to do it before a few months ago. That's a great point. Brandon Staley's in the same boat as Sirianni, though, and it's just a fundamental difference between the two coaches, plain and simple. Yeah. And again, I don't want to pick, Nick, pick on Nick Sirianni, but when you're going to be the coach of an NFL team, you step into that, that fray, and it's fair game for people to assess whether or not you're properly 
sending the messages that need to be sent about your team. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.